Naruto, reviewing because I want to, and let's talk about superheroes, more specifically, Bible Man. Bible Man was a show created by Willing Ames, an actor who became a Christian, and decided to create a show about a rich guy becoming a superhero who spouts a lot of scriptures while wielding a lightsaber. You can guess the final result. Yeah, the show was critically panned by critics, and for good reason. It's one of those shows that sometimes it's so bad, it's hilarious. And today I'm going to review an episode called A Light in the Darkness, a continuation of the two-parter Jesus Our Savior. So let's see how bad it is. The video begins with a previously on segment. Basically, Bible Man's old partner, Coates, shows up and starts shooting up the Bible cave. Shooting at the same location for maximum damage. Luckily, the computer system, Eunice, tries to stun Coates, which reveals that he's actually a robot. Well, it's time to see the intro. This is the story of Miles Peterson, who had everything. That's the intro sequence? I don't care what you think of the original intro, at least the visuals matched what the narrator is saying, instead of abstract visuals that doesn't match at all! Okay, let's play the original intro so that anybody who has not seen the Bible Man movie knows the origin story. Miles Peterson, a man who had it all. Wealth, status, success. Still, something was lacking. Miserable? Alone, his spirit beaten, Miles oh. Peterson gave up. <laughs> then in his darkest hour, the words of a single book began to change his life. Bible. And at last, Miles Peterson felt the burning desire to know God. Inspired by the word of God, and equipped with unyielding faith, Miles pledged to fight evil in the name of God as Bible Man. Come on! You expected Shakespeare out of this? After the train wreck of an intro, we see the Bible team upgrading Eunice, both hardware and software. Good job, Cypher. Bible Girl. Why is he talking to them using their code names? Meanwhile, we head to the sewers to meet our villain of the video. Our villain is a nerd? This villain is terrible. He's way over the top as a nerd, which is bad for even Bible Man standards of villainy. He's way too weak. He lacks the charisma of other villains. I hope it doesn't get any worse. Come on, the worst thing that can happen is him being part of a nerd mafia. Hey, Johnny Caboni's the name. That was a joke! Why? That was my old play. <laughs> you remembered. How can you date a computer program? They don't count. Apparently, the boss wants the wacky protester to tell him his evil plan for the video. The plan involves using potions to cover the whole town in a cloud of darkness. In other words, he wants to give them depression. You gotta be kidding me! They're ripping off the exact same plan from another good Bible Man episode? So, how are they gonna test this, McGovern? Well, by giving it to a teenage boy in a local high school. Of course! Our victim for the episode is Cory, a young man struggling with mild depression. So our villain use their magical teleporting abilities to infiltrate the school. In the courtyard! How did anybody notice a blue man in nerd gear? Is everybody blind? Look, you don't have to lie to me. I know when I'm not wanted. What? What did I say? Well, obviously he's being infected by a purple cloud surrounding him. Aren't you noticing it? Meanwhile, at the Bible cave, the Bible trio receives their 1-800 number. The caller is the principal telling them about Cory, so they decide to gear up. We smell a truth. Sequence 
sequence lame? Okay, the other transformation sequences weren't that great, but at least they look somewhat appealing. The transformation sequence should be one of the most coolest moments in the Bible Man episode, like the morphing sequence in Power Rangers. Not this sequence! The visuals aren't very interesting, and any cool factor that is left is destroyed by the terrible music! Anyway, after that, they use the awesome power of terrible green screen to travel to the school. There's no need to stare. There's nothing going on here. Go about your business. Hey. The man said, go about your business. Thank you, Cypher. Now Willie Ames is directing at its finest. Yes, Willie Ames directed, wrote, and starred in this episode. I can't go any further without examining this scene a bit further. It's hilarious that Bible Man is telling everybody not to draw attention to himself by basically saying, Move along. Nothing to see here. What makes this even more hilarious is the part where Cypher tells a girl who is minding her own business to stop staring at them. Then Bible Man thank him for it. We next see one of the few okay things about this episode, which is when the Bible team tries to connect with Corey. I like how they treat the situation somewhat realistically. The team is trying to connect with him, but he is not letting them help him, which is a lot like conversations between a youth leader and a student that they just don't connect with. So, what's the villain's next step? The cloud goes into Bible girl's friend. She will lose all of her strength and show the city that not even her faith has all the answers. Why Bible Girl? Could you give us a reason? So McNurg Pants cause trouble so that the Bible team gear up to meet him. Alright, I need to comment on their gear. The costumes are stupid. Bible Man looks like he's in long johns with shiny plastic plates glued onto it. Also, the chin part of the mask looks a bit off for some reason. But hey, it's better than Cypher's clear plastic bowl for a helmet, and at least it looks like it's not from Party City. Now on to the weapons. Bible Man, of course, gets the lightsaber, Cypher gets half chakras, and Bible Girl gets a laser tag gun. What's so bad about Rager guns? Our heroes meets the wacky protester. After quoting some verses, though Bible Girl picked the wrong verse for her reply, they start fighting. We are Oh wait, I forgot to mention that the fight scenes are dreadful. It's more like a game of terrible baseball. How is this fighting? Anyway, a drone shows up that is actually Lucy, the evil counterpart to Eunice, just to run away with Bible Girl chasing her. So the nerd retreats. He got what he wanted. He split us apart. Bible Girl's in grave danger. Let's go. Um, why did you just pause for a second and not run immediately? So Bible Girl chases Lucy, but she's not firing her gun for some reason. Then Nerdy McNerd Pants shows up. Of course she doesn't do the sensible thing, which is to run away, run away! Which of course gives the bad guys plenty of time to give her the most horrendous thing in the world. Teenage angst! <gasps> Not teenage angst! So our lame villains returns to their evil lair when the nerd father calls them. Since you're doing such a bang up job, why don't you sing me a little ditty? Like a song? You, you want me to sing you a song? Well, I, 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 I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm... Please don't do it! Hit it, Ringo! No! No! <sighs> You're not seeing things. This video has a villain song. And boy, it's bad. The music is just terrible. It's a terrible parody of like a sexy song. And the guy is not singing at all. Plus it doesn't add anything new to the wacky protester's character or anything new to his plans. The song is just basically a recap of his evil plan, which is to take over the town by giving everybody depression. 
So how will Bible Man and Cypher save Corey and Bible Girl from depression? So our feelings of darkness and despair aren't real? I wonder if they are sending across Superman and Batman. Okay, their actual solution is to connect both Bible Girl and Corey to other Christians to help them through this period of depression. It's good for Bible Girl, but for Corey, there's one tiny problem. No shade. Uh, what about... Black Church? The kid goes on and on. Yeah, so their solution won't work for a kid who haven't made this decision yet. So why is Corey thinking that is a good idea? Well, look at the time. It's time for the epic crap battle of history. Where will it take place? That's stupid. 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 How do you spell stupid? Why an opera house? It's not like there's going to be an event held there that night. And it's not helping his goal of taking over the whole town. Anyway, our heroes arrive, only to be captured by the cloud of darkness. The darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. First John 2, 8. Wow. What? Jesus said, I have come into this world as light. So that those who believe in me will not live in darkness. They're using a DSX Machina? God set us free from the power of darkness, and he brought us into the kingdom of his dear son. Colossians 1 Let me explain. First, it's lame. The heroes were complete idiots for not using their weapons. Second, they won by quoting scripture? How does that summon a light bomb that sends the villains flying off like Team Rocket? And that's the light in the darkness. Yep, that's how they ended. After the battle, this happens. Back to the cave. Wanna go? A lackluster ending to a lackluster movie. Bible Man, A Light in the Darkness shows the absolute worst of Bible Man. But that doesn't mean that Bible Man itself is bad. That there's nothing good in the series. On the contrary, there's a lot of good stuff in it. So what are the good parts? Well, stay tuned as I review every episode of Bible Man, starting with the first two episodes that were aired on TV.